Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Radiolink SU27, a beginner friendly RC airplane. In this quick video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to use it and give you my feedback after testing it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the user manual, the SU27 RC airplane which comes mostly assembled, two 600mAh 2S LiPo batteries, since this is the ready-to-fly set, the Radiolink T8FB radio controller is included. You're also getting an accessory pack that includes two stabilizers which you will need to install by yourself, a charger and a USB Type-C cable that is going to enable you to charge the 2S LiPo batteries, a hex key driver, a spare 3-inch propeller, spare servo parts, a screwdriver and a fiber tape, and in case you're getting the ready-to-fly version, a part that is going to enable you to change between mode 2 to mode 1 is included as well. In terms of features and specs, the SU27 jet features a 1306 4000 kV motor which supports up to 3S batteries when pushing the included 3-inch propeller. The brushless motor is connected to a 15 amperes ESC which in turn is connected to the Radiolink by MIDI-B. This flight controller features a built-in gyro which helps you to stabilize the airplane in stabilized mode. On each side of the airplane you can find a 4.3 grams servo which using a single rod controls both elevators and flaps slash ailerons. Since this is the ready-to-fly version, the SC27 came with the Radiolink R8XM ready receiver it is pre-connected to the flight controller and pre-bound with the Radiolink T8FB BT radio controller. As I've mentioned earlier, the ST27 comes with two 600mAh 2S LiPo batteries. The battery is using a JST connector and mounted to the airplane using this slot over here. It is secured using the included battery velcro strap and if you'd like to, you can use also slightly bigger batteries, you can also use a 3S battery, but you probably will need to expand the battery bay. The dimensions of this battery bay are 47.6 by 16 millimeters. The body of the SU-27 is made out of PP, which is quite a standard for this type of airplanes. On the front of the airplane you can find this plastic part, which is going to help to protect the SC-27 in case of a direct impact. In terms of weight, without a battery, the SC-27 weighs about 88.5 grams, so it's a pretty lightweight airplane. The included battery weighs 32.5 grams, so the total takeoff weight of the SC-27 is going to be about 121 grams. As for getting the SC-27 airplane ready for a maiden flight, in case you have the ready-to-fly version, you will need to use either four AA batteries or a 2S battery in order to power the radio controller. Over here you can find two pins which are used for connecting the 2S battery or the four AA battery tray to the radio controller and after you secured the battery or battery pack, you'll be able to power it up. The T8FB radio controller features a built-in Bluetooth model you will be able to configure the radio controller using Radiolink's app and pay attention that out of the box the voltage alarm of its battery is set to 5 volts. You will be able to adjust this value using the Bluetooth app. In case you are using 4 AA batteries, 5 volts should be fine, but in case you are going to use a 2S battery, I recommend to set this alarm to 7 volts. You will also be able to configure the voltage alarm for the battery which is used for powering the airplane using the app as well and I recommend that you should either read the user manual or watch other reviews that exclusively go over the features and specs of the radio controller in order to get more familiar with it. When powering the radio controller I recommend to set switch A to the lower position. Switch A unlocks the motor when it is set to the upper position and I recommend to be extra careful as even though this is a pretty small motor, it can still inflict some damage and hurt your fingers. 
after you turn on the radio controller and make sure that switch A is set to the lower position, you can power the RC airplane. And as you can see, now I'm able to control it. Since the default option for this radio controller is mode 2, the left stick only controls the throttle, which now as you can see is disabled since the motor is locked. Now the motor is unlocked, so I'm able to spin the motor. And the right stick controls the roll and the elevators. Switch B is going to enable you to switch between three modes. The top one is stabilize mode, which I recommend to start with in case you are a beginner like me. The center position is gyro mode, which is sort of half stabilized mode. This mode is going to enable you to perform some acrobatic stunts while still help you to stabilize the airplane using the built-in gyro. And the bottom position is full manual mode, which means that the gyro is not going to be in use and you should only attempt to try to use this option in case you're an advanced pilot. In addition, on the top right side of the radio controller, you can find this dial. It's going to limit the range of the elevators and ailerons. When it is set all the way to the left, it is going to be limited. And when it is set all the way to the right, the range is going to be extended. So in case you want to have less aggressive maneuvers, you should set it all the way to the left. And in case you want to be in full control, you should set it all the way to the right. Now, in case you find that the airplane is not able to properly stabilize itself in stabilized mode, you should first make sure that the battery is properly secured. And after that, I recommend to calibrate the gyro of the DiamondDB flight controller. It is done by powering the airplane, then place the SC27 on an even and flat surface. Make sure that the ready controller is powered up and then put both sticks in outward position, such as this one. After two to three seconds, the gyro is going to be calibrated. And as you can see, after unlocking the motor, the airplane is trying to stabilize itself in stabilized mode. You can see that it's also going to stabilize itself in the second gyro mode. And when it is set to manual mode, the airplane is not going to stabilize itself and you're going to be completely on your own. Now, in case you're getting the plug and play version, you should note that the SC27 is going to come without the radio controller and without a radio receiver. It means that you will need to install your own radio receiver and use your own radio controller. And you should connect the radio receiver to the Biami DB flight controller using this three pins JST port. Since the price difference is not that big between the ready to fly and plug and play sets, I recommend that in case you're a beginner, you should go for the ready to fly version. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the SC27. Here you can see me preparing for the maiden flight, maybe not the maiden flight, but one of the first flights that I got to fly this airplane. And as you can see, first of all, I'm powering the ready controller, then the RC airplane and then I'm making sure that everything is working as expected. Now I'm launching the RC airplane and as you can see launching it is pretty easy. All you have to do is to make sure that you are in stabilized mode, put the throttle at about 75% and then launch the RC airplane. Now I'm flying it in stabilized mode which is pretty simple but maybe this is not the best place to fly an RC airplane, especially if you're a beginner, since it is close to a lake. So what I recommend you to do is to head outdoors to a pretty large open area, at least for your couple of first flights. Now, as you can see, the SC27 can get quite fast. In order to keep it in the air, you should keep the throttle over about 20% and in stabilized mode, 
I don't recommend going over about 80% throttle because then the airplane is not going to be very stable. Now as you can see I'm practicing just going in circles and I recommend to switch between left and right directions in order to gain a better control of the RC airplane. Since the SC-27 doesn't feature a radio control, in order to turn to the right or to the left, you need to roll to the right or to the left using the right stick and push the right stick towards the bottom in order to gain attitude. While it's not that hard to control the SC-27, I do recommend that in case you know someone that has experience with RC airplanes that you should have them around for the first couple of flights and if you don't, it's important that you go for a pretty big field where you'll feel comfortable to just cut the throttle and let the RC airplane to crash or land when you are out of control. Here you can see me switching between stabilized and gyro mode. Under gyro mode you'll be able to perform some stunts and I recommend that first you should perform the stunt and then return to stabilized mode at least until you are feeling comfortable flying the RC airplane. Here you can see an unsuccessful attempt of performing a stunt which eventually ended up in me crashing the SC-27. Luckily I was able to bring it pretty close to me and no harm was done to the RC airplane. As for landing the SU-27, it does take some practice as well. I recommend that for the first couple of flights, you should just lower the RC airplane by lowering the throttle and then land quite slowly. But as you can see, as you are going to gain more experience, you'll be able to land even by catching the RC airplane. It's not that hard. And since the RC airplane is not very heavy and the motor is located on the center of the airplane, it's not very dangerous. So overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that in my opinion, the Radiolink SC-27 is a very good option for beginners who are looking for their first or even second RC airplane. I've crashed it many times and it is still in one piece, so it is quite durable. I did had to fix it, but nothing major is broken, which is something very good, especially for beginners, because as you may know, you are going to crash the RC airplane if you are going to fly it. In addition, the built-in gyro makes it very easy to fly it, which is of course important for beginners, and as you advance, you can switch to the gyro and manual modes. In terms of flight time, you can expect about nine minutes, maybe seven minutes if you're going to push the throttle, which is not bad for this battery. And as I've mentioned earlier, the motor supports up to 3S batteries. So when you advance, you can also upgrade the battery, which is going to make the SC-27 even more powerful. Now in comparison to the Redilink A560, which I've previously reviewed and I also really like, I think that the SC-27 is probably going to be a better option for a beginner for a couple of reasons. First of all, on the SC-27, the motor is located on the center of the airplane, which is probably safer than a motor that is located on the front side, like the A560. Controlling the SC-27 is probably easier than the A560, since it doesn't feature a rudder and all the 3D flight modes. And finally, as far as I can tell, the SC-27 is more durable than the A560. Anyway, that's going to do it for this quick video about the Redilink SC-27. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy and safe flying, and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.